Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters, those of you on YouTube and Pattern Realm. Today, we're continuing with our series, Lessons on Mama. I'm recording this on a Wednesday afternoon. It will be released early Thursday, early tomorrow morning. Lessons on Mama. I have a story to tell you. September 1996, I mean, September 2006, rather, was a swirl of activity. I was floundering around in graduate school, not, not doing very well. Not in parity with myself and, sign, and sound mind. And after the start of school, within two short weeks, I wound up in hospital for mucho depression. Thing is, being not in parity of myself and, and sound mind, I didn't think to tell my mother. Here's why. I had heard the week before I went to the hospital that my uncle was in the hospital for a serious heart ailment. He's the same age as I am. And another friend of the family was also in the same hospital uh, back home here in Odessa at the same time. And I was up in Lubbock. When I came to my senses, I asked the hospital to let my, let my family know. Nothing. So, a few days later, I pick up the phone and I call mom. Are you all right? Yes, mom, I'm in, I'm in the hospital. Are you okay? Yes, ma'am, I, I just had some depression. The, the doctors the doctors are doing what they can. I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. The next afternoon, I'm at lunch. When a nurse comes charging into the dining room, Jimmy, phone call from your brother. Now, this is against hospital policy, but he wants to talk to you right now. It's urgent. I picked up the phone call, and he demanded to know where I was. I told him which hospital. He said, our mama is about ready to pack up the truck, go to Lubbock, and go to look, at you, look for you. But I didn't want to restrain her, because what you did was very stupid. Kevin, you know with Uncle Andy and Sean in the hospital, I couldn't, I didn't have the heart to tell Mama. I didn't want to worry her. He said, well, well congratulations, because you just did. A couple hours later, I was finishing my classes at the hospital, picked up the phone and called Mama. And she breathed a sigh of relief. She said, you have no idea how badly I wanted to track you down. James Anthony Henry Jr., don't you ever do that to me again. Mama, with Amy and Sean in the hospital, I didn't want to stress you out. She said, I'm already stressed. Let me tell you, son, you may be 36 years old, but you'll always be my baby. Don't you forget that. Not long afterwards, I went out. Some of the other uh, patients went out for a smoke break. I went out for a fresh air break. With one of the, with, with us was one of the mothers of the patients. And she'd ever heard my conversation with my mother. She said, son, give me some tell you this. I'm here with my daughter here because I'm concerned about my baby. To mamas, it don't matter how old you are. You will always be their baby. Now, during the phone call, Mama said, you're coming home in a few weeks to see me for the weekend. I need to see you and talk to you so that I know that you're really alive. We can't let this happen. Mama is now approaching what is to be her 71st birthday in May. She's having, um, she's she's had her medical issues, but I'm still praying for my mama because I've many even powerful, wonderful lessons. And I can't think of a more powerful conclusion to lessons I learned from mama. 
I learned to dress for success and reverence in church and, and out in the community. I learned that leadership is earned. I've learned my Baptist roots. But most importantly, I've learned to my mama, as long as she's alive, and even in the eternities, I will always be her baby. What a rich blessing. So if you have mothers, if you have a mama, whenever you get a chance, call them and check on them. And if you live near them, hold them tight. You never know. Mothers are a precious gift. And I believe in staying on that. With the always confidence knowing that as far as my mama, Betty Jo Siebold, I will always be her baby. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters. <laughs>